Well, welcome everyone. It is unusual we meet on Sunday afternoon, but uh, this afternoon we have a very special guest all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, I met Jennifer Ling, maybe yeah, four, Oh, yeah. <laughs> 非常特别，我们逐日下午在这边聚集，因为今天我们有个非常特别的客人 Jennifer Lin. I met Jennifer about four or five years ago in Anaheim one time. 在 Anaheim 四五年前我遇见她. But lately, I've been following her. 然后后来我就一直跟着她的消息. Uh, within the past four or five months, I attended two presentations from Jennifer. 过去四五个月，我参加了Jennifer的两个啊座谈讲座。Uh, uh, first one was in Nixon Library. 第一个是在尼克森图书馆。Uh, Jennifer is very talent, and she has a history, TV or movie about Beijing, uh, fifty years ago. Jennifer非常的聪明，她在五十年之前就有一个啊电视节目。that's about 50 years ago when Nixon uh, began to visit China. So Jennifer has whole document about the, the story how United States and China began to have the diplomatic relationship. If I say anything wrong, you can correct. <laughs> Uh, that is a wonderful uh, presentation. I think there's another one maybe coming uh, this coming week in, at UC Irvine and Jennifer can mention that the title was uh, that was Beethoven in Beijing. But anyway, uh, two months back, I was in Washington, D.C., Museum of the Bible. Then again, I followed Jennifer to have a special presentation on the faithful in Shanghai. Jennifer Faithful. Yeah, because many of you here are familiar with watching many his side, his brothers, his family side. 因为我们很多人在做的，也许对尼弟兄的那一呃他的家人比较熟悉。But then after that presentation, this I began to realize, um, watching my niece, older sisters, on the sister side, they also have a faithful stories and a very touching histories. 但是后来借着 Jennifer 跟我们的交通，我们才知道，原来尼弟兄的二姐那一方面，他们有一个非常非常美好的经验。so I did an account that Jennifer will have to have one here in Cerritos. That's why we're here today. Okay, without further ado, maybe Jennifer, you have a uh, yes, microphone, yes. you can begin. Okay, can you hear me? Is this working, Abraham? Yes. So, uh, Eunice, you have to remind me to stop so you can translate. <laughs> But thank you everyone for being here today on this kind of cold and cloudy day. And thank you, Abraham, for the invitation. Yes. Um, can we lower the lights now? And uh, before I start, though, I do want to thank someone else in the audience here, my cousin Sam Nee. Sam, when I was researching my family history, uh, Sam was a teacher, a guide, and someone who really 
uh, you know, help me to understand the me side of the family. So thank you, Sam. I would not have been able to finish this book without your help. So if we could start with the first slide. So Shanghai Faithful is the story of my family. And I go back five generations to uh, tell you the story of the Lin family. And what really makes my family history noteworthy is that through my family story, you really can understand the history of Christianity in China. On the Lin side of the family, we go back five generations. So through my family story, I think you, uh, people are able to learn a lot about how Christianity took hold in China. Next slide, please. So I'd like to start with a little bit of history. 1972 was a very important year. That's the year that President Nixon traveled to China to begin the process of renewing relations. You have to remember that back in 1972, China and the United States did not have a relationship. Since 1949, the United States did not have a diplomatic relationship with China, and China did not have a diplomatic relationship with the United States. Next slide. So for families like mine, when Nixon began this process of normalizing the relationship with China, it had a profound impact. My father left China in 1949 and came to the United States. He met my mother, who was an Italian-American nurse in, uh, from New Jersey. And New Jersey. But during uh, you know, all of this time, our family, the only way we could communicate with our family in Shanghai was through letters. But after Nixon went to China, things began to gradually uh, improve, and we were able to place a phone call to Shanghai soon after the Nixon visit in order to talk to my, my father's family that he had left behind. And I remember that day because we were all in my father's office and all of my siblings and my mother and my father and we passed the phone around and we talked to my grandfather for the, the first time and the only time. And it was a few months after that phone call that my grandfather passed away. Oh, Next slide, please. So 1978, this is another important year. This is, it was then that President Carter, President Jimmy Carter, formally renewed relations with China. So it became uh, very easy for people then to travel to China. 
The United States opened an embassy in Beijing, and China opened an embassy in Washington. 美国在中国有了大使馆，中国在美国也有大使馆。Next slide, please. So my father immediately applied for visas、uh, to take us back to Shanghai to meet the family he left behind. So my father immediately applied for visas to take us back to Shanghai to meet the family he left behind. His older sister and one of his older brothers had stayed behind in Shanghai in 1949. 一九四九年的时候，他的大哥跟大姐都留在中国。So he took myself and two of my other sisters to China to meet his family. 所以他就带我还有我另外两个姐妹，我们一起到中国去去见他们。Next slide, please. The first moments of the reunion were so happy and joyful. 我们第一次见面的时候，非常的高兴，非常的快乐。I was meeting cousins who I had only known their names and read about them in letters. 我见到的是我的表兄弟、堂兄弟，以前只是在名字上面知道他们而已。And my father was back with his siblings. 而且我的父亲跟他的姐弟，啊，或者是姐弟兄弟能够聚集。We were able, in fact, to stay in the home in Shanghai where he grew up. 啊、uh, ，我们也可以住到我父亲从小长大的家里。呃、uh, ，Next slide, please. So, I'll never forget our first morning in Shanghai. 但是我永远忘不了我第一天在香呃上海的那个早上。After this very happy reunion, 在我们非常欢乐的欢聚之后 ，there was an uncle who pulled my father aside. And said, "This uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee." Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger brother of Watchman Nee. Oh, this uncle was the younger And the truth of the matter was, we were clueless. 事实上，我们完全不知道。Yeah, and what this Uncle George told my father was that the period of the Cultural Revolution and even before that were very difficult and horrible for my family. 所以，我这个叔叔跟我父亲讲，在文化大革命前后，对我们的家人是非常非常的辛苦。Watchman Nee's younger brother described the hardship. That everyone faced, including, you know, physical and mental persecution. Nee 弟兄的小弟就跟我父亲讲到他们在那里所经历的所有的苦难，呃，身体上的，精神上的。My father was shocked by the news. 我的父亲非常的惊讶。And it really, uh, it upset him tremendously to know how much they had suffered. But what was interesting is that when we returned to the United States, 当我们回到美国之后 ，my father seemed to take what he had learned in China, put it in a box, and kind of put it away. He moved on. 但是我父亲从 I'm so sorry. Yeah. So when we went back to Philadelphia. My father seemed to take what he had learned in China, put it in a box, and put it away. He moved on with his life. So, when we returned to the United States, my father took what he had learned in China, put it in a box, and put it away. He moved on with his life. So, when we returned to the United States, my father took what he had learned in China, put it in a box, and put it away. He moved on with his life. So, when we returned to the United States, my father took what he had learned in China, put it in a box, and put it away. He moved on with his life. So, when we returned to the United States, my father took what he我那时候要学习准准备学新闻方面记者方面的工作，所以我没有办法把这个忘掉。And I became consumed with the question of what happened to my family and why。我就对呃我的家人怎么回事，还有发生了什么事情，对这个满了问题。Next slide, please. I became a journalist. I went to work for the Philadelphia Inquirer newspaper. And from the moment we went to China for the first time in 1979 until the present, I really began researching,、uh, trying to understand my family history. 我后来成了记者
呃做新闻方面的工作，我是在费城的一个报社工作，所以从那个时候，从我去了中国之后到现在，我一直在研究到到底发生了什么事情。I lived in China for for three years in the 1990s, working for the Philadelphia Inquirer as a foreign correspondent. 我一九九零年的时候在中国住了三年，就是做这个费城这个报社的呃国外记者。But when I wasn't working, I was really mining the family history. 当我不工作的时候，有空的时候，我就在那边一直找这个家庭的家这个家的历史。I went to archives from. From London to Hong Kong, Shanghai, Texas, Philadelphia. Ah, from London, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Fengcheng, all over, looking for many documents. I interviewed relatives、uh, on both the Lin and the Ni family side. I also interviewed the Ni and Lin families. And I visited places that were important to my family history, including the graves in Fengcheng. I visited places that were important to my family history, including the graves in Fengcheng. Hills outside of Fuzhou. 我也去找了去了一些对我家里非常重要的地方，去访问了我的曾祖父的墓园。My father called this my obsession. <laughs> 是在福州外面，但是我父亲说我这个是是完全霸占我了。And in many ways, he was correct. 在很多方面来讲，我实在是被这个霸占。Next slide, please. But. What happened was, for every answer that I I came up with, I had another question. And this, 但是后来发现，我每次找到一个答案，我又有另外一个问题。And this kept pushing me farther and farther into the past. 这就让我就越来越去寻找之前的一些情形。Next slide, please. And so it brought me to the question of who was the first convert in my family. 所以后来我就在询询问，谁是我们家里家族里面第一个得救的信主的 ？And that question brought me to the little town of Ardu in Fujian Province. 那这个问题就把我带到福建的二都这个城市。I went to the Lin Family Hall in in the town of Ardu. 啊，我就到了二都的林家的这个。And I began to piece together the story. 家族的地方，然后就开始把这些故事摆在一起。Next slide, please. And I found out that the first convert in the family was a fisherman, a simple fisherman from Ardu, who went to work for the missionaries as a cook. 我就发现我们这个林家的第一个得救的，他乃是一个渔夫，很简单的一个渔夫，但是他是去帮那时候的西教士做厨子的。And this is the page from our Japu, which is the family、uh, records. This is from their Japu 里面拿下来的一页 So the fisherman left his village and walked with his son on his back to the city of Fuzhou. So this fisherman left his village and walked with his son on his back to the city of Fuzhou. So this fisherman left his village and walked with his son on his back to the city of Fuzhou. 那个儿子去了传教士所办的学校。He was trained to be a medical doctor. 他要受训成为医生。And he was sent to a small hospital in coastal Fujian. 他就被呃派到靠近福建福州吧一个小医院里面。In this hospital, two thirds of the patients were opium addicts. 哇，在这个医院里面，三分之二的病人都是抽鸦片的。Next slide, please. He met a young woman who was a teacher. He 在那里遇见一个年轻的女子是老师 And my great grandmother was just a simple peasant girl who grew up in a a rural village. 那我这个曾曾祖母她是很简单的一个女孩子，她是在乡村里面长大的 But she was educated by the missionaries. 哦，但是传教士给了她教育 And trained to be a teacher. 而且受教育要成为老师 So the doctor and the teacher started a family, and the oldest son was my grandfather, Lin Buji. So this, this doctor and the teacher have become a family. The first son is my grandfather, Lin Buji. Is it right? Lin Buji. Lin Buji. 
My pronunciation is horrible. No, no, no. I, I, I actually have this. Okay. Limbuji. 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 Buji. 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 Okay. Buji. Close enough. So my grandfather is standing behind his father in this picture. Next slide, please. My grandfather, from the time he was seven or eight, went to the missionary school. Which later became known as Trinity College. But what made Trinity College special is that the students were taught in English from the time they entered the school. So my grandfather was, was a, a very good student and was sent by the missionaries to Shanghai to attend St. John's University. The missionaries knew that if, if Christianity was going to grow in China, that they needed to have Chinese clerics, Chinese men and women who would be spreading the gospel. So the missionaries at St. John sent my grandfather to Philadelphia to go to the seminary. So in 1918, my grandfather arrived in Philadelphia to go to the Episcopal Seminary in that city. Interesting fact. Uh, he arrived in September of 1918 in Philadelphia. Just as the pandemic was breaking out back in 1918. Oh, and if you read my book, or better yet, buy my book, <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll, you'll read about how the pandemic affected the city of Philadelphia in 1918. Little did I realize that I'd be living through a pandemic. <laughs> so my grandfather was part of a generation of Chinese, young Chinese, who knew that for China to develop, the men and women needed to study abroad. While he was in Philadelphia attending the seminary, he also enrolled at the University of Pennsylvania to study philosophy. He had every intention of spending at least 10 years in the United States getting his master's and his doctorate in order then to return to China to help build China. Next slide, please. But during his time in Philadelphia, he had been there for only two years when he got a letter from home. And his father in Fuzhou told him, your younger brother wants to get married, but before he can get married, you're the oldest, so you must get married. So he told his father to tell him, your brother wants to get married, but before he can get married, you're the oldest, so you must get married. And they had picked out a young woman in Fuzhou for him to marry. My grandfather, my grandfather was not happy. <laughs> this was not his plan. He was a modern man. He was going to help build a stronger China. So this created a real dilemma for him. Does he follow his father's wishes and be a dutiful son? Or does he follow his dream and disobey his father and stay in, China, in the United States? 
呃不顺服他的父亲留在美国。Meanwhile, my grandmother. 同时呢 ，she was studying in Shanghai at the McTeer School. 我的祖母那时候还不是 not、uh, grandma yet, right? What's that? Not grandma yet. No, high. She was in high school, like yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 那时候她还就将来的祖母， yeah. 她在上海是读一个 interior, a, 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 a missionary school in Shanghai. 哦，她是在这个呃传教士的学校，在上海读书。And her dream was to become a doctor and study in the United States. 她的梦想也是要成为医生，想要在美国来读书。But she had no choice. But she had no choice. She must obey her parents and return to Fuzhou to marry a man she barely knew. She had to listen to her parents' advice and return to Fuzhou to marry a man she barely knew. She had to listen to her parents' advice and return to Fuzhou to marry a man she barely knew. She had to listen to her parents' advice and return to Fuzhou to marry a man she barely knew. Neither of them wanted to be there. You see, they have smiles on their faces, and the picture on the right is their marriage picture. But the two actors do not want to be there. Next slide, please. But what the marriage did is it united the Lin family and the Ni family from Fuzhou. 结果这个婚姻就是林家和倪家联姻了，成为一家了。And the wedding photo from on the left side shows my grandparents standing behind Watchman Ni's parents. 嗯，这张相片就看到 Jennifer 的祖父母，他们是站在。尼弟兄的父母亲的后面。And Sam, I'm wondering, is that your dad? Would that be your father, the youngest one? 那小的那是不是 Sam 的爸爸？他不知道。So on the right side is Watchman Nee's mother sitting down. 右边的中间的是尼弟兄的母亲。And my my grandmother is the the daughter standing up to the left. And Watchman Nee's wife is Charity to the right, Sam. Oh, 对不起，刚刚这个倪师母在中间。Yeah. 后面那一排的左边是她的祖母，右边是倪弟兄的姊妹。Sam, tell them who the others are. Ah,、uh, the one on the left would be my、oh. my.、Uh, Go back one, the please. The oldest sister. Yeah. The oldest back, sister who who went to Hong Kong. And then the one on the right is um, um, my mother's.、Um, this would be, I call her mommy. Also, <laughs> uh, uh, she is George's wife. Okay. My second yes. uncle's. Yes. So this the the two brothers married two sisters.、Oh, yes. Oh. So my two brothers married two sisters. No, no, no. My 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 father John and his. Second brother George married two sisters. Is so. My mother and my mother. So, 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 my mother and my mother. My grandfather was pastor of an Anglican church. 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 My grandfather was pastor of an Anglican Um, at the same time, Watchman Nee was living in Shanghai. 同时，倪拓生也是住在上海。And he married Charity Zhang from Fuzhou. 他从福州娶了 Charity Zhang, who was my grandmother's best friend from Fuzhou. 他是我的祖母的最好的朋友。At the time in the 1930s, too, he was building the the Christian Assembly in Shanghai. 一九三二年开始，倪弟兄就是在上海。He, he was speaking and writing and touring、uh, other countries too at this time. He talked, he also wrote, and he also went to visit overseas. And this is a photograph from his wedding. This is Nee Di's wedding photo. Next slide, please. For my grandmother, moving to Shanghai 
reconnecting with her brother created a real dilemma. Now you have to remember that my grandfather was an Anglican priest and he was pastor of a church. And my grandmother every Sunday would play the organ at, at the church. But she was very interested in what her brother was teaching. She was really drawn to the, the Christian assembly in Shanghai. She actually told her husband that his sermons would leave her cold. <laughs> but she really loved going to the Christian assembly of her brother. And it put her in a real bind. So my grandmother, though, decided that she would no longer go to her husband's church, but would begin attending the assembly of her brother. And as you can imagine, this did not go over well. <laughs> my, I know this for a fact because my father and his siblings remember the fights they used to have about this. And so you know, my grandfather would say, how can you not come to church with me on Sundays? What will people say? Next slide, please. This created a real dilemma for the children, too. So the way they resolved it was the boys would go with my grandfather to the Anglican church on Sundays. And my Aunt Martha would go with her mother to the Christian assembly. And just a quick aside, the picture to the right is the assembly outside of Fuzhou in the mountains, uh, Guling. And Sam took me there in 2015 to see it, but this is uh, Sam, do you want to add anything on describing that assembly, Paul? Actually, this, this was the uh, training center in the uh, uh, Guling Mountain. Oh, okay. So you may notice this, but the picture doesn't really show that well, is that it steps down. So if you're standing at the back, it's further higher up. So the person who is talking, speaking, contrary to normal churches at a podium, <laughs> high up, is all the way down below. 在那里讲道的人跟我们现在的好像的教堂他们都站在台子上不一样讲道的人反而是在最低的地方。The so idea is who is speaking is the servant of God. 因为讲道的人事实上就是神的仆人。So to serve someone, you're in a lower position. 所以你去服侍的人的时候,你是站在比较低的地位。Yeah, this is what the Lord Jesus did when he was on this earth. I remember asking my Aunt Martha, what was it about Watchman Nee that, that appealed to you? And she said he had a very quiet way of speaking. He wasn't standing here at the podium being bombastic. And he had a very special way of describing complicated ideas in simple language. 
他能够用很简单的语言来解释一些好像很复杂的情形。Next slide, please. So my father immigrated to the United States in 1949 at the end of the Civil War. 我的父亲在一九四九年呃这个内战之后，他来到移民到美国。He studied medicine at St. John's University, so it was very easy for him or easier for him to to leave China and continue his medical education in the United States. He ended up at a hospital in Atlantic City, which is why there's a picture of him in his bathing suit on the beach. When my father came to the United States, his father would write to him every month. 当我的父亲来到美国的时候，他的父亲就是我的祖父，每一个月都会写信给他。And when he married, those letters were in English. When my father married, 当他的父亲结婚之后，那他祖父写给他父亲的信就是英文。And so that was our only connection to China. That's the only way we were allowed to communicate. 这是我们跟中国独一的呃接触的关系。And we had to assume that every letter that was written by us and sent to China, and every letter from China to us, was opened and read by the authorities. 而且我们相信那时候我们写的信寄到中国，跟中国寄出来的信都被政府啊打开来看过。So the letters were were very upbeat and happy, and really didn't tell us anything. 所以他祖父的信都是非常的快乐，都是很高兴，让让让他们什么都不知道。Next slide, please. What we didn't realize is that things for the family became very difficult from the beginning of the People's Republic of China. Watchman Nee had approximately 100,000 people at the time across China who were following his teachings and um, members of, of the the little flock. I know it's not a, a phrase you like to, to hear, but that's how foreigners used to refer to, to his followers. And basically, he was seen as a political threat. He was arrested in 1952. He was accused of economic crimes. He was accused of being a Guomindang spy. He was accused of being corrupt. It was a character assassination. And in 1956, he was sentenced to 20 years. Next slide, please. He was sent at first to the prison in Shanghai, the Tilan Chiao. He was sent to the prison in Shanghai, the Tilan Chiao. And uh, my grandmother and Watchman Nee's wife, Charity, would often go to visit him in prison. 我的祖母和尼弟兄的姊妹，就是 Charity， 他们常常会去访问他，看他。It wasn't just Watchman Nee who faced difficulty. 不是只是尼弟兄有难处。This is a, a picture of Brother Lin from Fujian Province who spent about 20 years in and out of jail because of his beliefs. 那右边的是林弟兄，他在他是福清的林弟兄，他也在监牢里面二十年之久。Next slide, please. It was also hard for my grandfather. Uh, you have to remember that in ninth, at this time, the United States and China were at war in the Korean Peninsula. And he was aligned with the Anglican Episcopal Church. And the Episcopal Church was seen very much as American. 
So he was removed from all church work. He was basically pushed aside. So basically, they just removed him and didn't let him do any work. Uh, and it, it, you know, it didn't help that his brother-in-law was Watchman Nee, who was considered an enemy of the people. 那当然，他的亲戚是尼托生，对他也完全没有帮助，因为尼托生他们认为他是人民的敌人。So at the age of 53, my grandfather was basically reduced to babysitting his grandchildren. 所以五十三岁，我的祖父基本上就只是照顾他的孙儿女。Next slide, please. And of course, we we didn't really understand any of this. Of course, we didn't really understand any of this. Even though、uh, my grandfather was writing to us on a monthly basis, he 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 kept us in the dark. He, although every month he wrote to us, we didn't really understand what was going on. In 1966,、uh, things really started to change. In 1966, things really became dark for the family. In 1966, things really became dark for the family. In 1966, things really became dark for the family. In 1966, things really became dark for the family. And I don't need to explain to you all why that was. But when the Cultural Revolution started in in Shanghai in August of 1966, the the family home was attacked three times by groups of Red Guards. In 1966, when the Cultural Revolution started, They ransacked the family home. They were looking for incriminating evidence. They just took their things and put them in the closet, and they were looking for evidence that could exonerate them. My cousin's piano. They took that away from her. They destroyed her sheet music, and they ruined her albums of classical music because it was Western. My sister, my sister's sister, they took her piano, took all her strings, and took all her records. 唱片所有的乐谱全部都毁坏，因为他们觉得那个是跟西方有关的。But the the Red Guards took particular aim at my my grandmother. 但是红卫兵特别在这边啊，是对对付他的祖母。They beat her and they tried to get her to renounce her brother. 他们打他，而且要他否认他的弟弟。This happened not once but every day. 不只是一次，而且是几乎天天这样做。And she wouldn't do it. Ah, she won't. She won't do that anymore. Despite all the the physical hardship, she would not renounce her brother. Next slide, please. Oh, other direction. <laughs> so during the Cultural Revolution, my my cousin, the pianist,、uh, you know, she went. To, she was at the Shanghai Conservatory of Music and would go to school every day, but they wouldn't play music. They would learn political indoctrination. So in the Cultural Revolution, this is my grandmother. She is studying music. She is in the Shanghai Music Academy. They are still going to school every day, but they can't play music. They are still learning political indoctrination. My other cousin, at the age of 16, was sent to the countryside in、uh, northeastern China. And there she worked as a barefoot doctor. Oh, she was there as a barefoot doctor, delivering her first baby at the age of 16. 16 years old, she gave birth to her first child, the first child. But it was a, it was a time of real hardship for the family. So, for them, that family was very difficult. Next slide, please. So, for my Grandfather, he was accused of being an American spy. My grandfather, my grandmother was accused of being a counter-revolutionary. My grandmother was accused of being a counter-revolutionary. And we have the documentation to prove this because many years later, after the Cultural Revolution ended, they were able to reverse those verdicts. 我们有文件可以证明，因为在很多年之后，当反呃这个文化大革命结束之后，他们能他们啊使他们平反他们了。Next slide, please. So Mao died in 1976, and when that happened, the Cultural Revolution ended. In China, 一九七六年过世，所以在那个时候，文化大革命就结束了。And China began to to recover from the dark years of the Cultural Revolution. 中国就从这个文化大革命的黑暗时期开始，有点开始恢复了。And back to the history lesson I gave you at the beginning. 
1978, Carter renewed relations, and in 1979, we showed up in China. 1978年, Which is where my talk began. Next slide, please. When we were in China in June of 1979, the authorities announced that churches would reopen. And I remember many, many years later, when I was interviewing my Aunt Martha, I asked her, I said, when the churches reopened, did you immediately go back to church? Now remember, Aunt Martha was the one who went to the Christian Assembly of Watchman Nee, not the, the church. And her answer to me was, Aunt Martha said she did not go back to church. And I asked her why, and she gave me a one-word answer, fear. Uh, it, she continued to, to practice her religion privately, and it wasn't until she immigrated to Australia that she uh, began attending the Christian Assembly in Australia. Next slide, please. When I was researching my book, I went back to Fuzhou in 2015, the city where it all began. And I wanted to gauge what the legacy was of both my grandfather and Watchman Nee. Next slide, please. And with the help of Sam Nee, I was able to do that. We, I, I found that the house churches were alive and well and thriving. And I also found the church where my grandfather used to work. And I interviewed the pastor of that church, which was part of the three self-patriotic movement. And I asked Professor, uh, Pastor Sun, I said, are you afraid that things could go back to the old way? Uh, and Pastor Sun said to me, no, there are too many of us. Next slide. But here we are in 2023, and the state of Christianity in China is very uncertain. Things the number of Christians in China is growing rapidly. Interest in religion in all types of religion is increasing in China. So not just Christianity, but also Buddhism and also the philosophy of Confucius. So in China, and I have not been back to China since 2019, so I really don't know what's happening today, but you all read the newspapers, and the situation is very tense and uncertain. What's interesting is that in that in when China became the People's Republic of China, there were only an estimated 1 million Christians, including Catholics. So in 1949, uh, 
And many people thought that Christianity would die out because it was a foreign religion grafted onto Chinese society. But what that overlooked, and what I learned from my years and years of research into my family, is that that overlooked the legacy and the commitment of people like Watchman Nee and my grandfather, Lin Huji. And on that, I would like to thank you for sitting through my talk. And I would be happy to take any questions if anyone would like to ask me something. And thank you to Eunice for a very good translation there. I'm not sure. So any questions? Uh, well, we have a very touching, wonderful story that's who I heard in Washington, D.C. I said, for sure, I would like Jennifer to come to talk to us. And this afternoon is very unusual for the first time. I, I believe we have Jennifer Lin on the Lin side, we have uh, Sam Lee on the Washington Lee side, <laughs> and we have a brother Wu Yuqi. He ah. is the cellmate with the Watchman Lee for almost 20 years. <clears throat> So for sure, this is a very special time this afternoon, and I was told on the Zoom, on the line, we have more than five, we have 500 and, and our brother already early mentioned me, do we need to increase the, the size of the Zoom? But I said, oh, 500 is good enough. But, so I'm more than 500 and some big cannot get on. <coughs> and I think we have a lot of people who are in the room. So I feel I have a little faith. <laughs> so I feel I have a little faith. 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 I think we have time for the question, and uh, we have uh, three experts here <laughs> for the answer. I think, uh, I don't know, maybe you can come to the side of question, then the, everyone can know your question, and uh, Jennifer can answer. So if anyone, feel free, or you, you, can, or you can stand up and make sure you make it louder so we can hear you. Jennifer, uh, we really appreciate uh, your uh, lecture. And it was my privilege to be there at the uh, Nixon Library and also uh, the Bible Museum. Oh. Thank you so much for your um, amazing lecture. Uh, and so my question is, um, because you have done so much research uh, regarding your family and what you need, and I'm sure that you have gathered some uh, materials, some written materials, uh, maybe directly uh, from what you need, and uh, you know, so far, uh, the Living Stream Ministry has published 62 volumes of what's been these kind of works. And uh, um, can you share uh, what you might have already gathered that maybe what's many himself has written that's not yet collected in what's many collected works? Yeah. Or, because, you know, we're studying church history and we're very much delighted uh, to be able to access the materials uh, if that's possible. Yeah, so um, when I was doing my research, um, one of the, uh, the families I reached out to was the family of Angus Kinnear, who wrote, uh, you know, the definitive biography of Watchman Nee, Against the Tide, and they shared with me some of his material, Angus Kinnear's material, which included some writing by Watchman Nee in English, uh, which I, you know, is accessible if anyone wants to look at it there's a you know a dropbox file so uh i have a few things some letters one is is a very interesting series of drafts of um 
uh, he, he was writing about the missions, the missionaries. Uh, and then there is a, a handwritten note. Uh, and so there are a few items like that from the Kinnear con collection. From my own personal collection, the Lynn side, there's, there's nothing. But the Kinnear family has shared whatever they had from their father. Thank you. And thank you for coming to, to my talks. <laughs> she also, I love friends. Oh, I'm sorry, I no, forgot about no, you, no, Eunice. Okay. <laughs> Uh,冯迪熊是问说,他是他很高兴他参加了尼克森的演讲会,也参加了,呃,尼克森图书馆的演讲会,也参加了这个华府的正经博物馆的讲座。那他说他听到这个Jennifer给我们的交通非常,非
And Watchman Nee and Charity lived on the other side of Zhao Zhou Lu in, in Shanghai. And mm. my father used to say he had this incredible collection of books and American magazines. So mm. he used to like going over there to look at Life magazine. So he said, Ni Di Xiong and his wife are uh, living on the other side. And his wife, his wife, his wife, he likes to go to Ni Di Xiong's house because Ni Di Xiong's house has some English magazines. And he often goes to his house to see this. Life, Zazi. <laughs> so, any other questions? Yes, Judith. I would like to know that um, as a researcher, you probably had some personal surprises, maybe not, not bits of. Excuse me. <laughs> you probably had some, some personal surprises, and if you could share with us. One or two personal surprises. You had? Yeah, I mean, I think less surprise, but more kind of a building of a revelation, mm. if I could call it that. I mean, I, I knew my grandparents had kind of a tense beginning, but what I learned is how as things got rougher for them, more difficult, they really became so much closer as a couple. 呃，刚刚这位女士问她说：“你这样子做了这么多研究，有没有发现一些很很惊讶的东西？”她说：“也许没有那么多惊奇，但是她发现她对他们有更多的认识，很多的启示。”她说：“从她的父母亲，就是她的祖父祖母，他们因为经过了这些事情，他们两个人的情情形变得更亲密。” And I don't know this for certain, but it's my reading of their relationship that. My grandfather uh, must have been so impressed by my grandmother's resolve and strength. 而且他们没有这样跟我讲，但是我的观察就是，我的祖父大概对我祖母这么的所谓的很恒忍，他非常的啊、uh, 欣赏，非常的看重。I'm not sure I could have withstood the type of, uh, you know. Uh, Persecution that she did. I mean, there was real physical and mental persecution of my grandmother because of Watch Me, and I'm not sure uh, I would have cracked, frankly. Uh, so I think my grandmother's strength in the face of this adversity um, had an impact on everyone. Uh, I believe my grandmother is very strong. She can endure so much pain, and not only on the physical side, but even on the emotional side, she endures so much pain. 他他说他如果是他的话，他不觉得他可以经历这样的情形，可以胜过这样的情形。The the one anecdote I'll never forget, and this is in the book, but、uh, when my grandmother died because she was a counter-revolutionary black element,、mm. she couldn't have a proper funeral. 嗯，啊，一件事情就是我的祖母过世的时候，因为她是被标为反革命分子，有这个标签在她身上，所以他们没有办法给她一个。正式的、很正确的、就很合适的葬礼。So in the crematorium, they they had her on a gurney, her body, and you know, without any sort of you know proper、uh, ceremony for the family. And my cousin recalled how my grandfather just patted her head and called her Bessie, which was her English nickname, not her Chinese name. But they couldn't. They couldn't display any emotion because that would have been, you know, used against them. So, in the burial ground, they couldn't have any kind of ceremony to make her grandmother be buried in the burial ground. And her grandfather was there, and he could only pat her head and call her by her English name, Bessie. He couldn't call her by her Chinese name because they couldn't have any kind of ceremony. So no surprises, but I, by by spending so much time researching their lives, I feel as if I finally got to know my grandparents. And I only heard my grandfather's voice once on a telephone call, but I had his letters, and his letters provided me with at least a little window into their lives. But once I understood better what their lives were all about, I feel like I I finally got to know them. 因着我做了这么多的研究，我发现我真的是认识了我的祖父。虽然我只接过他一个电话，但是我有他的信，所以我知道，我借着这样的研究，我觉得我认识了我的祖父。
Anyone else? Yes? So is it 1979 that journey was life changing for me. I was 19 years old, I was in college, um, and it kind of steered my entire life. Um, I grew up in the 70s in suburban Philadelphia. You know, my mother was Italian American. My father looked different than all the other fathers, you know, <laughs> so I grew up not really um, in touch with my Chinese history and background and roots. So for me, that trip was transformative. 这位弟兄问他说：“你一九七九年回中国的时候有什么特别的呃感觉？”他就说：“他本来在中在美国的时候，他是在费城的郊区长大，然后他的母亲是意大利裔的美国人，他父亲呢跟其他的父亲也不一样，所以呢他对这个整个的情形，但是他到了中国以后，他才发现他他对这个整个他的。”长大的环境，他对这整个的情形才会有更，他觉得是整个改变他一生的一个旅程。And as I, as I said at the outset,、um, you know, it was just so shocking to see how this family had gone through so much suffering and pain, and so I, I literally became consumed with trying to find out why. 而且他经过了这次的访问，他发现这个家人受了这么多的苦，所以他就要花，呃，花更多的时间。要来寻找更多的实在的情形。Yeah. Any other question? Yes. Were it deep trenches during the Ten Weeks? Aha. That's eventually, eventually maybe. No, at the moment it's available in English, but uh, uh, someone wants to translate it for me. <laughs> <laughs> 他说这个书会不会啊、uh, 写成英文啊、uh, 写成中文版？如果有人愿意帮他翻译的话，可以。目前只有英文版。Remember, in the letter between China and the U.S., there was special code, code about the. Yeah. yeah. You want to mention that? So, uh, uh, what Abraham is referring to is that when my family would write to my grandfather in Shanghai.、Um, My grandfather had no work because he was pushed aside, and so the family here would send money to China, and we used a code、uh, referring to the birthday gift to Aunt Mary. Aunt、mm -hmm. Mary lived in Hong Kong, and so that was a reference to whether Aunt Mary's gift arrived or when is Aunt Mary's gift coming. And during the Cultural Revolution, at the start of it in in 1966, my grandfather, in a letter, switched from English to Chinese, and he said very directly, "Please do not send Aunt Mary's gift this year. All is fine. Don't worry about us."、Hmm. So there had to be a lot of subterfuge there, and and we we were able to send money, but it had to go through Hong Kong. We couldn't do it directly. 他们那时候因为有些的情形，因为他的父亲已经被等于是被排挤，不能工作，所以他们会呃他的祖父，所以他们会从美国寄钱给他的祖父，然后他的祖父呢，然后他们但是他们就不讲说有钱，就会说你收到这个玛丽阿姨的礼物吗？或者这用这种话来讲，就是算是用一个这个特别的特别的什么 code 一个特别的密语来这样讲，然后但是他父亲后来就跟他们讲说，请你们不要再。寄他用中文跟他讲，请你们不要再寄玛丽阿姨的礼物了，表示说他可以，他没有问题。Well, thank you very much, everyone, and thank you, Eunice. No, <laughs> This is only less than one hour's lecture. There are many more untold stories. So, if you need, you can get this book at our bookstore. And、uh, Jennifer agree. If you get book today, she can sign her name on the book. And、uh, Jennifer has a little faith this time. I told her to bring forty books. 
she only brings 25. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, which I think. But you can get it on Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have, please go to our bookstore, go out and make a right turn, then come back here, Jennifer can sign the book for you. 我们今天这个演讲不到一个小时 Thank you. Okay, bye. Have a safe drive home. <laughs> 小心开车. Can I say the table for you? Good job, Mr. I don't know. I'm like, I feel very funny. Are you professional? Like, this is your... Well, 